Welcome back. We're on part five of episode 89, and it's time to talk about the first official match of the card, which was the Money in the Bank for the World Heavyweight Championship contract. They never really did give this another name, did it? Like the All-Stars one. Nope. Nope. Eh. Maybe we should just call it everybody else, like we were saying. Uh, Mid-card in the bank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, this was, of course, Wade Barrett, Cody Rhodes, or Bodie Bodes, as we uh, talked about earlier. Damian Sandow, Dean Ambrose, who didn't get even an entrance, really, on the pay-per-view. He just kind of popped up in the middle of the ring uh, when we started off. As well as Fandango, uh, and Jack Swagger, and Antonio Cesaro, which are now called the duo of the Real Americans, which, that's a little mm-hmm. disappointing. Did you believe they should have been collectively called the We the People? That would have been better. Because I'm waiting for them. WWE, they would have done that. They would have just called them Team We the People. (laughs) I'm waiting for them to come out to Hulk Hogan's theme song. Seriously. (laughs) Nah, it's going to be a remixed version. It's going to be a a hard rock version or country version. No, no, it's going to be the same version but sped up and with jingle bells. (laughs) (laughs) Like Del Rio's theme. Mm hmm. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the match now. There, there were some good spots to it. Now I'm gonna probably argue with Peyton spots. for like, yeah, spots. <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna argue with Peyton the entire time about this whole pay per view because I actually liked the pay per view a lot. I thought it was the best pay per view of the year so far, and um, this match was really good. I think there were a lot of times in it where I thought somebody could have won that. Maybe I didn't necessarily expect that they were going to win. Obviously, I you know never really fucking thought that Cesaro was going to win or anything like that. But I remember uh, there was a spot where I was like, "Oh, all right, now Wade Barrett's going to win," because I was dead set on the idea that Wade Barrett was going to win it, and it was just it seemed at the time totally obvious that Wade Barrett was going to win, and then he didn't, and I was just like, "Oh shit, what are they going to do? They're going to go with somebody else here," and then that kept me along the whole time. And Cody Rhodes in particular was the fucking star of this match. And he almost seemed like he turned face the second that they did that thing with the mic. Like, the crowd ate it up, having him uh, act kind of like a baby face in this. And uh, they were really kind of rooting for him. In a match that's all heels, we were kind of talking before about who are people going to end up rooting for. And I would have thought that Dean Ambrose, above all would have been, like, the focal point. But Cody Rhodes became the focal point. I thought that was pretty interesting. I Man, loved be- Cody in this match. I loved him in this match. And the whole him getting, you know, sort of um, juiced up by the crowd, his adrenaline, it was, it was every moment he had, especially those near falls as well. You know, when the Shield came in and Cody was cleaning house, it was amazing. And I forgot about Sandow. I totally forgot about the guy. And then Cody just goes, boom, ends up falling off the ladder and Sandow captures the freaking MITB case. I went nuts. It was awesome. I thought this match, in my opinion, stole the show. Yeah, it was certainly my favorite of the two money in the banks, that's for sure. Um, but are we really, like, the, the, the spots Tony was talking about, let's not skip over there. How about, uh, even though he didn't really get it the first time, Ambrose getting the cat on a ladder, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That was That was different. It was a little weird, though. It was a little weird, but I'm just saying that's something we haven't necessarily seen in Money in the Bank before. By, by a little weird, you mean a little botched? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I said <laughs> quality punches the on the time. internet, darling, here. Yeah. No, it, it was definitely botched. And, but, um, you uh, know, it, it looked awkward because of that. It would have been weird even if he wouldn't have botched it, though, because it was just... Like, who skins the cat on a ladder, basically? Well, like, what would have been the point of... It was uh, Swagger and Cesaro, right? Mm-hmm. What would have been the point of them holding the ladder up and watching him try to grab the briefcase? Um, he is not an, anywhere it. near as stupid as Jack Swagger openly volunteering Antonio Cesaro <laughs> to climb up onto his shoulders and take the briefcase. You're handing your teammate a world championship opportunity that you could be getting. I know. I fucking idiots. That. I looked at that and I was just like, you're really going to go with that. That's what you're going to do. I mean, it is swagger, but still, like... He must have been high that day. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
No, I thought that, uh, you know, pretty much top to bottom that this was pretty interesting. Um, uh, one thing that, you know, it's not really a huge deal or whatever like that, but uh, Cody Rhodes hit that muscle buster on uh, Cesaro. And everybody watching the pay-per-view with me, you know, Urban, Dace and all, we were all just kind of like, what? Like, he's pulling a Samoa Joe kind of thing? Like, there, there's such a weird comparison between somebody as big as Samoa Joe and somebody like Samoa Rhodes that uh, it just it looked so weird because you, you got to have, like, a big guy do that kind of... Did Bodie like, Rhodes soon. pull off a muscle buster? It's just like, what? No, but it looked legit. Cause the way that he did it, he kind of fell back into it. It's like with it, Joe, Joe sort of like crushes your entire body on his back. Yeah, where Rhodes, Rhodes just did that of, out of desperation. Yeah, and it, it looked like he was struggling to hold on to him and he fell back. And it, it looked good, in my opinion. It didn't it, it looked something more realistic in comparison to Joe's version, which just looks like he's just got someone in a small package. And there was that uh sunset flip power bomb thing that Fandango did, which Everybody t- uh, everybody does that kind of in the Money in the Bank ladder matches, but it's always good. Yeah, it was a it was a good match uh, in terms of spots. I think every guy in this match worked their freaking ass off. No, uh, Damian yeah. Sandow didn't do shit. Yeah, he well, kind of like stayed Sam- off to the side. Okay, are we? You you don't sound very happy with that decision, Pete. I mean, clearly he was the best option to win. Oh, no, no. no. I, actually, I'm fine with Damian Sandow uh, having the result of getting the money in the bank. But let's not give credit to Damian Sandow for making that match good because he didn't. He didn't nah, do he, anything. He really stood off to the side for maybe maybe a good half of the match. He I was think be, that he, was... At least a fourth. He climbed I'm behind gonna... the announce table. I mean, it would have been great if they didn't show him uh, <laughs> crawling behind the announce table randomly during the match. Because then you're like, oh, what's he going to do? Hide under there the whole time? I still don't think he was going to win, but I'm like, if it was supposed to be this big surprise thing, why would you film him crawling over there? I think yeah, that was done pur- I think that was purposeful. I, I think yeah, they did that because, to. honestly, I think they did that because they knew they wanted to get Cody over as the the um, stronger of the two in a way, at least for now. I do think they're going to build up Sandow over time, but I think they really wanted Cody to be the one to get over this knowing they weren't going to give him the case so that they can build both of them up yeah, evenly. Yeah, uh, they wanted him to, to turn babyface because he's done all he can as a heel. Like, yeah. like where was Rhodes going to go as a heel after that match? I think this is really the only fresh thing he can do with him, really. Well, we've all been kind of pining over the fact that Cody uh, was supposed to turn face like ages ago. He was in, yeah. he was in hell. You know, he was losing every match. He looked like really weak. When Sandow was having his matches, a series of matches with Sheamus, Rhodes was always the guy being used as fodder. And it was just like, okay, when's enough? And when I saw him in that match, I just looked at him and I was just like, it. it's like falling out of love with someone and, and just falling back into love with them again because you find out what makes them so special. It's probably he the was, strongest booking he's had in like half a year in yeah. one match. Um, and I think what they need to do from this now is they've got to keep the booking going, keep the match going, keep these two um, after each other. Hopefully, just keep making Sandow to be the sniveling little idiot that he is, and and have Cody chase because one weak moment for Cody if he gets uh, a situation where he ends up getting defeated in a match by a bigger name, it's just gonna totally destroy everything they've been building towards. So I'm, I'm hoping they keep it strong. But There's as, three, three other as, things I wanted to talk about <clears> in this match. Uh, one of them was the fact that the Shield and uh, the Usos became a part of it. Which, well, as soon as the Shield came in, I was sitting there going, no, no, like, don't fucking... The last thing I would have... I would rather have seen even Fandango win and lose like Peyton had been suggesting than for them to give Dean Ambrose the briefcase because the shield came out and I was really just like, don't fucking do that. But when the Usos came out, it was like, Oh good. Now you're not only killing that, but you're also making the Usos look a little bit more popular in the process. So that was a really good idea. And then of course, knocking Ambrose off the ladder and making him fall on top of the tag teams. Yeah. It's always a fun spot. Absolutely. I just didn't think they were needed in this match, but I can understand why they put them in there. It was, it was one of those things where it was just like, okay, they haven't really got a proper spot on the card. 
Put Le- shield? Yeah. Well, Le- it would have been the elephant in the room if they didn't show up. I mean, it's a no disqualification match, and one of their members is going for a world title opportunity. Why the hell wouldn't they show up? Right. And interfere. That's, a, that's just how I see it. But I get your point, too, Burham, where it's like, yeah, they were kind of on the YouTube kickoff. Yeah, it, it was sort of one of those things where I think the WWE felt, well, the booking, the guys who ever booked the match probably felt, okay, we need to give these guys um, a chance, you know, to, to shine at the pay-per-view because we kind of messed them about a little bit by giving them the kickoff show because of, you know, what's happened. And then they just pushed it forward. So it's, it's still, um, it was a good idea, but they weren't needed. Two other things that I thought were pretty funny. One of them was just a complete uh, screw-up on my part, but uh, there was an environment where a lot of people were kind of like hitting the ladder and knocking somebody down and all that other kind of stuff. And there was one shot in particular where Swagger was climbing up the ladder and Wade Barrett pulls down his uh, arm strap and he looks like he's going to give the bull hammer to the fucking ladder. (laughs) As opposed to Wade, uh, to Jack Swagger himself. And I was sitting there thinking at the time, if he fucking takes his elbow and smacks the ladder and that's what they do to knock Swagger down, I'm fucking done for this whole goddamn pay-per-view. Because that would have been one of the most ridiculous things I had ever seen in my entire life. They gimmicked up the ladder to break as soon as he does it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. I was just like, this has got to be ridiculous if they do that. Thankfully, they didn't do it. But, um... The, one, the other thing that I want to mention when it comes to Swagger, which was fucking hilarious, his face when he came out on his entrance, anybody who wants to go back and watch this pay-per-view, that is your, like, number one fucking highlight as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> he looked baked out of his mind and confused as all hell. His That's eyes are bulged out, and he's just got this droned, like... I have no idea where I am. Kind of look at his face. It's fucking hilarious. Swagger usually looks like a tool, though. So well, one this day was like beyond what I've ever <laughs> seen Swagger look like, he looked like somebody had just like like a fucking ghost popped up, and he was just kind of in shock or something. But he just looked like that the entire time. Oh my goodness! That's why he, yeah, as you said, that's why he must have been helping Cesaro out. Maybe because he... by giving him uh, shoulder lifts and giving him trying to give him free world title opportunities that he should be competing for. He spent a little too much time backstage with RVD. Now, uh, one note I have to say here is, uh, unlike maybe I don't know how many people picked Wade Barrett to win, but uh, yeah, just like I said last week, that certainly wasn't going to happen because of his nationality. We all know <laughs> that the company, specifically Vince McMahon, does not like uh, people from Britain. That's uh, fairly obvious at this point in his career. His career is dead in the water. I don't think they're ever really going to do anything with him. So it came no surprise to me that, like usual, he gets fucked out of any sort of elevation. But the greatest person they could have had win this match, somebody who's been doing uh, pretty much just a little bit less, or, or the same as Cody Rhodes, maybe a little more, Damian Sandow has finally given his due and actually is being given something Decent uh, right now, but now, as anybody knows, he's got the Money in the Bank briefcase, so we can all say he's going to be jobbing or whatever, but hopefully this is a sign of a turnaround for his career. He's been going against tons of funk for far too long now. Yeah, how is this do exactly? I mean, what has Damian Sando been doing these last few being, years? Being talented and entertaining. He's against who? Just himself. <laughs> against have, himself. You, have you ever not been entertained by him does he entertain you every time he's on the television screen yeah but he's not always on my television screen he's yeah. very rarely on my television screen yeah blame the that's that's just the way it goes sometimes i mean it is but stars then why do take is he, priority why why is he uh the guy for money in the bank then why Would why you? should we just hot shot him into this opportunity where now he's going to have a chance to become a world champion yeah, Clean no, slate. the mid card world champion. He's, but... he's, he's nev- <laughs> okay. He's never even won a tag title. Road Scholars couldn't even accomplish that. Cody Rhodes won the tag title with Bob Core Holly, and he could not do it with Damian. <laughs> All right, uh, and you this... know what? What's even worse, he won it with Drew McIntyre as well. Yeah, with this, it's a cl- you got you got to understand. With this, it's a clean slate situation. To them, they've they've made him so less important that it makes him. 
it, it 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 erases any pretenses you have of him before that. So now they can build from there. That's how WWE does. They beat you down until you're worthless, and then they rebuild you from the bottom up the way they want to. Well, the way I see the situation working out as I think it's the catalyst to start a feud between Rhodes and Sandow. Well, yeah, it's it's... to give these guys a chance to feud over the briefcase, which I don't see Sandow cashing in. And if he Why? does, I could see him losing. I could see Rhodes winning the briefcase and then, and then him cashing in more than I see Sandow. I like Sandow, but he, he ain't ready yet. As Payton said, he has done nothing to warrant him being a main eventer. And it's you know, not a main eventer, said, though. No, no, even it, though this is considered an upper mid-card title, it's a main event championship. You know, so he's not even considered a pseudo main eventer. Oh, come on. If Jack Swagger can win in 2010, anybody can win. Swagger was an ECW champion. Swagger, or also on the factoid, you know, he's a he's a former United States champion after he won that title as well. They, and they had this whole freaking thing about having former ECW champions winning the world title afterwards anyway. So that's neither here or there. Swagger had, in all intents and purposes... And I'll use the word had the pedigree to win that championship. And it kind of failed anyway afterwards because I tried to make him all serious and stuff. And it just didn't work. Well, Sandow I... has not even won a mid-card title at best. I fully agree. Sandow should have won the tag team championship and either the US or the IC title. Um and I would put him behind Cody and Barrett as far as the people that I would would have wanted to win this. At the same time, you know, on the optimistic side, what the hell? I mean, I like Damian and Sandell. Let's see what happens with this. It's not the same as if they would have given it to... Um, even to Dean Ambrose to an extent. Yeah, he is the U.S. champion. But his U.S. title champ, uh, reign right now, it's not impressive at all. Even I said he wasn't ready, though, Tony. Even I right. said that Ambrose isn't ready to be to go to that level yet. Yeah. Uh, and the problem people tend to keep thinking about is, oh, it's only the World Heavyweight Championship. It's still the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, it shouldn't have any kind of only in front of it. They should be yeah. booking it as if it's equal or just slightly below the WWE Championship. So they shouldn't really hotshot it to somebody like Damian Sandell. So They're I hope not. that... I hope that what they do is they really drag this out. I mean, if yeah. Sandale's going to keep the, the money in the bank, don't let him cash it in until the next money in the bank. Give cool. him a mid-card championship run in the process. There you go. You do a Rob Van Dam with him. You give him the mid-card title while he's holding the briefcase. Yeah, he you should know, have a, uh, an Edge Ziggler long run with the briefcase. Like, hold it for a while before you cash in, like a long time. Yeah, and again, I would say he needs to cash in immediately. You have it for a whole year. Ziggler's another prime example. He's held countless championships, countless before he held that briefcase. So there's a plan here. There, there has to be a plan. If they're going to give him to keep it, he's going to probably go through a series of mid card feuds, feuding over mid card titles while having that briefcase as the as the save point. My opinion, I believe he's going to end up dropping that case to either Rhodes or losing when he actually cashes it in and, uh-huh. you know, furthering his re- feud with Rhodes. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope he doesn't lose. Uh, I rather would have seen, I'd like to see the former where he ends up um, have it, losing the case to Rhodes. But we'll see. You know, it, the WWE has always managed to prove me wrong on, on a lot of things. So they'll probably prove me wrong here. Hmm. All right. Now, Fantasy League, what happened during this match? Uh, what match are we talking about again? <laughs> Money in the bank. bank. Oh my gosh, dude! Like so much stuff happened in this. What do we? We have. Oh goodness gracious! Sorry, let's just run down here. Who was in that match? We had Fandango for me, who did not win, so I lost ten points with that. Uh, Brendan had Wade Barrett, who lost him ten points, but he also had Damian Sandow, who was the winner, who gained twenty points for a pay per view victory, as well as thirty points for being the Money in the Bank winner, getting him a total of fifty points for Damian Sandow. Holy hell! Yes. <laughs> um, Michael Burhan only had Dean, oh yeah, Dean Ambrose and Cody Rhodes actually making him lose ten points apiece. 
Tony oh. had nobody, nobody in that match. No, you were you were lucky with that one. Uh, Miguel had Swagger and Cesaro, who both lost, also getting him another 20 points taken off. So he, he almost went for a clean sweep of losses that night, just as Miguel was starting to catch up, poor guy. Um, and Brayden had nobody in this match either. So there you go. All right. We kind of knocked out everything when it comes to that. Anybody else have anything else to say? Cody no. Rhodes was robbed. Robbed. I think that there was a uh, sign that just reminded me of it real quick to mention. If I'm remembering correctly, it was uh, if Fandango wins, we riot. <laughs> well, that's just wrong. I think if anyone came out looking more like a star of that match, it would be Cody Rhodes and then maybe number two, Fandango. Fandango, I think, is finally building himself back out of this whole stigma that he's gotten where everyone just thought he was a fad. I think he's finally proving himself as a serious competitor. He was... I think the the wrestling star of that Money in the Bank match, he had that awesome match with Randy Orton the following night on Raw to start the show. Big, big future for that guy. Yeah, same. I agree with Payton on that one. Uh, I believe that Fandango, there's a huge upside to this guy. He's gonna, he, He's got a lot going for him at the moment, and I think he's well enough earned himself. Um, he's brought himself back to the position that he was in before being injured prior to that IC title match. So there we go. All right, guys, coming up next, Intercontinental Championship, Curtis Axel against The Miz.